The capital of Indonesia was the target of ISIS's most recent act of terror, and here is the information. At least seven people were killed, including five of the assailants, and 23 people were injured. The militants initially targeted the police traffic post on one of Jakarta's main thoroughfares, then set off explosions in an apparent suicide attack outside a Starbucks coffee shop across the street. Security forces stormed the area, and the police later said they had arrested four suspects. We're going to have a lot more information uh, for you. Uh, this is not always the case, but coming right out of the gate, the morning after the attack, initial reports last night was that there was an explosion in Jakarta. Uh, they apparently know quite a bit about the, the people who set up this attack already. Thankfully, they, they were able to get four of the, um, the assailants to, uh, to find out more information from them. And to give you a little bit of history about uh, Indonesia's situation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, ISIS, the country has experienced several terrorist attacks by Islamic uh, militants that have killed hundreds including bombings on the re resort island of Bali in 2002 and 2005, and at international hotels in Jakarta in 2003 as well as 2009. General Tito Carnavian, the chief of the Jakarta Provincial Police and the former head of the country's elite National T Police Counterterrorism Unit, said at a news conference yesterday that the perpetrators were linked to leaders of the Islamic State in Raqqa, Syria, and warned that the group was expanding its operations across the region, including in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Thailand. He identified the organizer as an Indonesian citizen believed to be in Syria. The suspect, Bahrun Naim, is a leader of Katiba Nuzantara, a Southeast Asian-based military unit under the Islamic State, according to that general. Now, th this man had previously been in Indonesia. Uh, he served some time in jail, I believe it was three years for, for related offenses, and then eventually, once he got out, non-terrorism-related offenses, and then moved to Syria and is apparently organizing attacks for his home country. The ultimate betrayal. Of course. So they want to establish a caliphate. This is why ISIS, ISIS does, yes. is doing this. Yes. And they, they think that this is going to help them do that. Uh, I, this is one of their strategies. Yes, this, it's not the only one, but it's one like, of them. Yes. It's. I'm, I don't. You know what? Again, like uh, this seems like a big waste of time. Uh huh. For them to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's such a small explosion. They just really. It doesn't seem. Well, like, I mean, it, it did. It did kill a few people. Yeah, I know, but they, it's such a. It's not like the one before where it killed two hundred people, right? It was at two thousand two, mm -hmm. and oh, uh, in, in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. So they want to. They, they, I, I mean, they, they. There's a couple of different reasons that they want to do. It. I mean, obviously. So we gave you some of the numbers from previous years, pre-ISIS, other Islamic uh, militant groups. Uh, they have a history in the region now. A lot of people who don't necessarily pay attention every day to foreign policy. Uh, think that if you're talking about terrorism, and especially if you're talking about Muslim terrorism, you're talking about the Middle East and the surrounding areas. But of course, some of the largest uh, Muslim populations in the world are far to the east in the countries that we've listed before. And I think to some extent, it's about perhaps destabilizing the government. Maybe that's their goal. But then it's also, it's the ability to say, well, look, we're capable of carrying out attacks with affiliated groups in various parts of the world. We're powerful. We're awesome. Come join our group. Either in person, come and be a part of it, or fund it. And you so I think it's part of their recruiting efforts. You know, the radical Islamic jihadists, mm -hmm. am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. They seem to be as split, almost as, uh, as in disarray as the Republican Party, uh -huh. right? They all seem <laughs> to be fighting. Because I'm, I'm reading this article, and there's all, so uh, there's, first of all, most of them are moderate, right? But, but I'm talking about Muslims in, in that country. But, in that country, yeah. But, um, these radicals, like, so that you have the ones that are aligned with the ISIS, and then you have the ones that are aligned with Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. So that, <laughs> yeah, something that we've seen in various parts of the world over the past few years. It's like the Trumps fighting the cruises. Exactly. <laughs> That's what yeah, and from the from the outside looking in, it seems like really you guys think that you're that different. <laughs> I mean, we have pointed out occasionally. Um, for, that there are certain lines that up until at least the past few years, even Al-Qaeda, one of the worst terrorist organizations in the past hundred years, didn't cross. And they generally tried not to kill innocent Muslims, something that ISIS does not give a damn about. No, and they regularly slaughter Muslims like it's uh, like it's going out of business. Um, them being alive, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a strategy that unfortunately does seem to be working for them. I mean, we have, we have some more information later on, but there's, there's believed to be something like a thousand... Uh, sympathizers for ISIS specifically in Indonesia right now. That's obviously a huge concern for them there. But uh, I feel the need to tie this back to the State of the Union. Uh, Obama, he was talking about this is not World War III. Now, it is worldwide, 
and it is absolutely horrible that this happened in the in the capital of of Indonesia. But their capability is is to kill a couple of people. This is and what so I'm this saying. Is not, this is not an existential threat even to Indonesia, who is taking it as seriously as they should. This is not the Blitzkrieg. I mean, this is terrible that this yes. happens so so commonly and in such disparate parts of the world. And obviously, we feel terrible for the, the for the families of the people who are who are killed or injured. So, how um, many people got killed in this attack? Seven total people, five of them being believed to be the, the people perpetrating the attack. So two people who are not involved in the attack were killed, and then more than 20, 23. As of right now, these numbers always right. change in the, the aftermath of the attack, um, uh, injured. Yeah, I mean, um, again, the, I guess the, the point of terrorism isn't to actually have, you know, uh, uh, new, effectively uh, squash you, but they try to, it's a mind game. They're yeah. trying to terrorize you, so you'd be afraid of it. Even though that, because the reason why they do terror is because they don't have the power to do real war. Yeah, if they could have launched cruise missiles at Jakarta, they yeah. would have. Okay. But yeah, terrorism is always based on getting efficiency for your money. You use box cutters to make the enemy bankrupt themselves with cruise missiles. <laughs> yes. And, and unfortunately, we would never do that. I mean, no, we would we never, would never over, do that for more than a decade. We wouldn't overreach and invade uh, two no. Muslim countries at the same time. No. <laughs> now, obviously, the situation is a little bit different in Indone Indonesia. As we've said, they have had persistent attacks every few years and there there are hotbeds uh, in both Indonesia and the, the neighboring countries areas that are have relatively lawless they are relatively lawless and where there are more sympathizers or extremists and so they need to do what they need to do to keep the situation in check um, but I can't help but think when people hear about this because it, it, look it's in Indonesia so I have a I have high doubts that it will um, be covered in the media as much as if it was in Europe or something like that. Yeah, um, so certainly of not it is in Paris. as significant. Certainly not. Now, obviously, more people died in Paris, but um, yeah, the fact that it's in Indonesia means most media outlets in America are not going to care. But to the extent that it is reported and people see it, they're going to think, "Oh, here's another attack in another country. Are we safe anywhere?" And as bad as this is, yes, we're still safe almost everywhere. Yeah. I think I think we need to acknowledge that and I not not directly play into the stated goal of the terrorist organization. You really sound like a Muslim apologist right now. I, yeah, I was worried that I was You're not shitting tipping, your pants. My toe. You're not shitting your pants over these guys who uh, blew up a couple of <laughs> that you are not scared right now. I'm you apologizing. I have another I just got another alarm system put on my house. Exactly. I, I have, should get more guns. I have guns. I have I've always have mace and guns on me. <laughs> I'm wearing stilts so I appear bigger to the terrorists. <laughs> I just scare them. I, yeah. Am I overreacting? Yeah, I actually have a uh, feathers that array themselves behind me as a gigantic tail. It's intimidating for my foes. No, I I get I get what you're saying. If though. it gets really bad, if, if they do one more attack like this, I'm going to I'm going to pull a Ted Nugent and stop showering so my stink <laughs> will scare them away. That's a good idea, but I think that even before that happens, we should probably willingly give up most of our rights. I would like to give up most of my rights, at least most my privacy They're rights. They're weighing you down, and you need, you need to get that weight off so you can put Kevlar on. Yeah, that's... You don't want to be overburdened. Well, I have, I just, for Christmas, that's so funny, I got my wife some Kevlar pajamas. <laughs> because, and because I don't think that's an overreaction to terrorism. I think no. you, should, you should be always shitting your pants, mm -hmm. and that's what really diminishes them. If you raise them up to be scarier than they are, yeah. somehow you're fighting them. Yeah. Exactly. This now, is fun to talk like this. A lot of people are obviously going to hate that we're talking like this, but I feel like... What do you like mean? You mean the people who, the Trump voters who are shitting their pants constantly they're about constantly terrorism? Scared. They're just I've ready never to be seen, scared of Trump something. voters are so tough that 10 or 20 of them will beat the fuck out of one person, uh -huh. and they'll also constantly shit their pants about Islamic terrorism. Yeah. Oh, so boy, tough. there's nothing shows how tough you are by how scared you can be of ISIS. Has, have they ever... We fought the Nazis! <laughs> We beat the fucking Nazis, okay? We faced suicide bombers before. They called them, you know what they called them? Kamikazes. And what did we do? We made a nice little lemony vodka drink out of them. They're not so <laughs> scary anymore. I say we, I should just have a, we should have an ISIS drink. That's good. How do you make ISIS? A little vodka and terror. Yeah. That's what I'll have. 